consent to uh, address the Senate as if in morning business. Without objection. Mr. President, the events and votes that took place today are probably as historic as any votes that I have seen taken in the years that I have been here in the United States Senate. The majority, with only majority, the majority, with only majority votes, the same as was passed with Obamacare, with only Democrat votes, changed the rules of the Senate in a way that is detrimental, in my view, not only to the United States Senate, not only to those of us in the minority party, but great damage to the institution itself. Uh, one of the men who served in this Senate for a long, long time that we respected as much or more than any other leader, he certainly knew the Senate rules more than any of the rest of us combined, was one Robert Byrd. Three months before his death, Robert Byrd wrote this letter. Three months before his death, he said, during my half century of service in various leaderships in the U.S. Senate posts, in the U.S. Senate, including Minority Leader, Majority Leader, Minor Majority Whip, and now President Pro Tem, I've carefully studied this body's histories, rules, and precedent. Studying those things leads one to an understanding of the constitutional framers' vision for the Senate as an institution and the subsequent development of the Senate rules and precedents to protect that institutional role. This is important, I say to my colleagues. He said, I am sympathetic to frustrations about the Senate's rules, but those frustrations are nothing new. I recognize the need for the Senate to be responsive to changing times and have worked continually for necessary reforms aimed at modernizing this institution using the prescribed Senate procedure for amending the rules. However, I believe that efforts to change or reinterpret the rules in order to facilitate expeditious action by a simple majority, while popular, are grossly misguided. While I welcome needed reform, we must also be mindful of our first responsibility to preserve the institution's special purpose. Finally, at the end, he said, extended deliberation and debate when employed judiciously protect every senator and the interest of their constituents, constituency and are essential to the protection of the liberties of a free people. I ask unanimous consent that this letter by Robert Byrd be included in the record at this time. Without objection. President, I wish that Robert Byrd had been here on the floor today. I wish that Robert Byrd had seen the travesty that just took place on a party line vote. And when I use the word hypocrisy, I use it guardedly. I do not use that word uh, with abandon. But this is another broken promise, another broken promise. I read from an uh, article entitled Flashback, read in 2008, quote, as long as I am the leader, we will not have a nuclear option. Senator Harry Reid said in a 2008 interview that as long as he was a Senate majority leader, the nuclear option would never happen under his watch. Quote, as long as I'm the leader, the answer is no. He said, I think we should just forget that. That is a black chapter in the history of the Senate. I hope we never, ever get to do that again because I really, really do believe it will ruin our country. He was talking about 2005 when this side of the aisle was in the majority and we were going to change. There was an effort which we were able to defuse in order to do exactly what we did today. So in 2008, the majority leader said, Reid rallied against Republicans who fought for the measure, saying it would lead to a unicameral legislature and that the U.S. Senate was purposefully set up by the Founding Fathers to have different rules than the House of Representatives. Such a measure like the nuclear option, he said, would, quote, change our country forever. And I'm sorry to say I agree with him. I agree with what he said in 2008. Yet on Thursday, on a nearly party line vote of 52-48, the Democrats abruptly changed the Senate balance of power. So here's the full exchange I'll read from. Tom Daschle, what was the nuclear option? 
And what likelihood is there that we're going to have to face nuclear option-like questions again? This is an interview that, that the Majority Leader had with former Majority Leader Tom Daschle. Quote, what the Republicans came up with was a way to change our country forever. They made a decision if they didn't get every judge they wanted, every judge they wanted, then they were going to make the Senate just like the House of Representatives. We would, in fact, have a unicameral legislature where a simple majority would determine whatever happens. In the House of Representatives today, Pelosi's leader. Prior to that, it was Hastert. Whatever they wanted, Hastert or Pelosi, they got done. The rules over there allow that. The Senate was set up to be different. That was the genius, the vision of our founding fathers that, that this bicameral legislature, which was unique, had two different duties. One was, as Franklin said, to pour the coffee into the saucer and let it cool off. That's why you have the ability to filibuster and to terminate filibuster. They wanted to get rid of all that. And that's what the nuclear option was all about. Dasho, is there any likelihood that we're going to face circumstances like that again? Read. As long as I am the leader, the answer is no. I repeat, he said, as long as I am the leader, the answer is no. I think we should just forget that. That's a black chapter in the history of the Senate. I hope we never, ever get to do that again, because I really do believe it will ruin our country. I said during that debate that in all my years in government, that was the most important thing I ever worked on. Boy, this gives new meaning as to where you stand on an issue as opposed to where you sit. So this hypocrisy is not confined to members of the Senate. Senator Barack Obama former member of this body, on April the 1st, 2005. I know for the benefit, especially our newer members on the Democrat side, who were not here at the time and don't know what we went through to try and stop it when it was being proposed by this side of the aisle, the uh, Senator, then Senator Barack Obama said, who congratulated the Senate today on their action? He said, quote, the American people sent us here to be their voice. They understand that those voices can at times become loud and argumentative, but they also hope we can disagree without being disagreeable. And then, the pre then Senator Barack Obama on April 1, 2005, went on to say, what they don't expect is for one party, be it Republican or Democrat, to change the rules in the middle of the game so that they can make all the decisions while the other party is told to sit down and keep quiet. I asked my colleagues, what were we just told to do today? And he went on to say, the American people want less partisanship in this town, but everyone in this chamber knows that the majority chooses to end the filibuster. Quote, if they choose to change the rules and put an end to the democratic debate, then the fighting and the bitterness and the gridlock will only get worse. He went on to say, now I understand the Republicans are getting a lot of pressure to do this from factions outside the chamber, but we need to rise above the ends justifies the means mentality because we're here to answer to the people, all of the people, not just the ones that are wearing our particular party label. And he went on to say, if the right of free and open debate is taken away from the minority party and the millions of Americans who asked us to be their voice, I fear that already partisan atmosphere in Washington will be poisoned to the point where no one will be able to agree on anything. That doesn't serve anyone's best interest, and it certainly isn't what the patriots who founded this democracy had in mind. We owe the people who sent us here more than that. We owe them much more. There are several other. Uh, in May 2005, Senator Reid also said, Quote, if there was ever an example of an abuse of power, this is it. The filibuster is the last check we have against the abuse of power in Washington. We just eliminated the filibuster, my dear friends, on nominees. And they went on to say the threat to change Senate rules in April 2005, the threat to change Senate rules is a raw abuse of power and will destroy the very checks and balances our founding fathers put in place to prevent absolute power by any one branch of, of government. So, yes, I'm upset. Yes, several occasions. We have gotten together on a bipartisan basis and prevented what exactly happened today. And what exactly happened today is not just 
uh, a shift in power to appoint judges. That, that in itself is, is, is something that's very important. But what we really did today, and what is so damning, and what will last for a long time unless we change it, that could permanently change the unique aspects of this institution, the United States Senate, is if a majority can change the rules, then only a majority can change the rules, then there are no rules. That is the only conclusion that anyone can draw from what we did today. Suppose that in a few weeks that the, the, the majority doesn't like it that we object to the motion to proceed. 51 votes. Suppose that well, uh, cloture, they don't like having those votes for cloture. 51 votes. My friends, we are approaching a slippery slope that will destroy the very unique aspect of this institution called the United States Senate. And I believe that the facts will show, as the Republican leader pointed out today, that this was a bit of a straw man. Yes, there have been a handful, a small number of nominees that were rejected by this side of the aisle. But there have been literally hundreds and hundreds of nominees who have not even been in debate on, this, uh, on the floor of this Senate. So all I can say is that when people make a commitment, such as I just read from the President of the United States when he was in the Senate, and from our majority leader, we should not be surprised when there's a great deal of cynicism about when we give our word concerning things and our commitment to, to things. And I go back to the man that I probably respected more than anyone in the years I've been in the United States Senate, one Robert Byrd. And one thing I can promise you, that if Robert Byrd had been sitting over in the majority leader's chair today, well, you would not have seen the events that transcribed. This is a sad day. I'm angry, yes. We'll get over the anger. But the sorrow at what has been done to this institution will be with us for a, a long, long time. Mr. President, I yield the floor.